In the last episode, we were in Omaha, Nebraska and Council Bluffs, Iowa, exploring the eastern terminus of the Transcontinental Railroad. This week, we're still in Council Bluffs and looking at travel at the turn of the century at the Rails West Museum in Council Bluffs. Behind me, right here, is an old train depot that, to the best of my understanding, was built in the late 1800s. So it wasn't at the exact time uh, that the Transcontinental Railroad was built, but it, it was right here where it started. Uh, and was in use for a long time. Has since been, I guess, kind of restored and is currently the Rails West Museum right here in Council Bluffs, Iowa. So we're going to go in here and uh, take a look around and, and see what we can learn. All right, well, I just walked into the depot here. And something that I really found interesting about this place is that it has two main rooms. One of them is a men's waiting room, and the other one is for women and children. This is where the men would have waited for their train. Uh, the reason it was segregated uh, was that men could be together and could smoke and could, uh, I guess, maybe use vulgarity or talk that they typically wouldn't around women. Women would be in the other room. We'll go in there in a second, but it's right in here. Uh, and, you know, they could feed their kids, um, you know. But anyway, just kind of uh, interesting to, to think about the, the differences uh, between then and now. If you go to the airport today, well, one of the first things that they have to do is weigh your luggage. Well, it's no different in uh, the late 1800s. Here's a big old scale that they use to weigh people's luggage. Make sure that, uh, I guess it wasn't too heavy. Huh, that's pretty cool. Now, what I'm looking at right here is the ticket office. We're gonna just kinda dodge in here and see what we can see and there's all kinds of just interesting artifacts from the time period so it kind of takes you back into what it would have been like in 1899 got some of these old telegraph machines Very interesting. I'm now walking from the men's waiting room into the women's waiting room. So you can see they have a lot of, again, just really interesting old artifacts related to uh, train travel around the turn of the century. And some of this old luggage here. Here they have an original uniform, like what a train operator would have worn. Pretty interesting. And then yeah, some silverware. Pretty fancy. Now here is something that has really become a relic. An old payphone booth. <laughs> That's actually pretty cool. This one's made of wood. Wow. Yeah, this is, I don't know, kind of cool. Uh, this is a little step stool that was created to help passengers on and off of the train. Uh, something else to note about this place, if you look here at these tiles, uh, these are all original to the depot, uh, as well as this floor and all of the wood. 
So they've done a, a really good job at uh, preserving this little piece of history here. We are just now walking out of the, the depot. So this is the door that the women would have walked out of. And then if you go right over here, this is the door that the men would have walked out of. They would have met right here along this uh, brick path and then hopped on their train right here. So this is still an active track that, that is in use today. Something else that's kind of interesting about this depot if you'll notice, this color brick right here is different from this color brick. Well, the reason for that is, is that this right over here um, used to be open. And the reason that it was open was for horse carriages to come in. They would unload their luggage, unload uh, the people, and then they could go inside the depot and wait for the train to get here. But it got bricked up in the 1950s because obviously there is not horse carriages anymore. Very, very cool place. Well, here at the, uh, the Rails West Museum, they also have a bunch of trains on display that you can go look at in addition to the depot itself, uh, including this giant monstrosity behind me uh, that I think was built in the 1930s. You can see this big, like, 74, 72 inch wheelbase. So anyway, we're gonna go take a look at uh, some of these trains and look at a little bit of the history of travel here in the United States. What we are looking at here is a rolling mail car. So this is pretty interesting. You can see where all of the letters would have been sorted. Something that really surprised me is that uh, this is from the 1960s, so they were still using rail traffic for the mail in the 1960s. And this thing wouldn't stop. So be rolling along about 80 miles an hour and they would have to pick up and drop off bags of mail while they were moving. And it was expected that uh, each person working here could sort 600 pieces of mail per hour. Pretty interesting. I was just mentioning how the workers on this mail car would have to pick up and drop off mail. Well, this is a mail crane. So what you would do is you would hang your mail off of that thing and as the train rolled by, they would pick it up uh, or drop off bags of mail. Looks like a good way to get hurt. This engine right here is a coal burning engine that was built in 1902 and later was uh, transitioned over to an oil burning engine. We're gonna walk up here and just take a quick look. Yeah, so this is what the view would have been like. Huh. It always amazes me looking at this stuff that, that people built these things. Just the, the engineering that went behind it is always impressive to me. Oh, I about fell down. All right, I see a rope. And if I look outside, I see that the rope is connected to a bell. Now, the car that I'm walking into right now is a pre-World War II club car. So you can see there's a little kitchen area here. And prior to World War II, you would bring your food along and then uh, you could have that to cook your food. And then you can see they've got a little dining area here. And then if you go a little further back, look at how nice this is. You go onto an airplane now and you're all crammed if you get in the economy seating. Look at how spacious and comfortable this is. 
All of this stuff that you see in here is original. Pretty cool. Wow, I love this car. This, this one's really interesting to me. Now here's another old caboose uh, that we can't go into because they are in the process of restoring it. But uh, something that's interesting, up here, that's called a cupola, I think was the, the term for it. Well, that's where somebody in the caboose could poke their head up and they could see down the train in case there were any fires or any trouble or anything like that. Just so that you could get a, a look at your whole train line. And as we mentioned before, this is still an active track. So kind of cool that something that started back in the 1860s with the Transcontinental Railroad is still active today. All right, well, that was the Rails West Museum right here in Council Bluffs, Iowa at the eastern terminus of the Transcontinental Railroad. Very cool place. Uh, learned, learned quite a bit today. History, I mean, it's like a bunch of puzzle pieces. You, you take a little piece here, a little piece there, and once you get enough pieces, you start getting a little bit better idea of the bigger picture. And this was just another piece. Uh, very interesting place that, that's worth visiting. But uh, anyway, tomorrow morning, we will be off to the next spot.